Can we hear a little bit about how Annika is changing the security of the supply chains uh, as the world becomes more and more global? Sure. Michelle? So sort of on a high level, what we do is we use microbes as tracking devices. So what we do is we convert data, digital data, into strands of DNA. We insert that little bit of DNA into an, a microorganism, a probiotic microorganism, to be honest. Uh, and then we can sort of apply that organism and sort of uh, have it hitch a ride on any food or agricultural product or, or really anything through the supply chain. Um, and what the reason we use a microbe to do it is because we engineer it to go into a spore. So a dormant state that allows it to be impervious to high temperatures and UV light, sort of protect that DNA barcode through transit. And so why this is important is because you can spray romaine lettuce, for example, and you can mix it around and wash it and treat it, uh, microwave it. You, you can have it decay for a month and we can still re-identify sort of each leaf back to its origin. And so based off the different kind of requirements and different supply chains, um, that microbial tag allows us to get just really granular information throughout the entire transit uh, without having to worry about things like, you know, uh, cross-contamination or uh, of tags, I mean, uh, or, you know, rubbing off from, from one thing to another. So it's just an incredibly hardy package um, of information. And then we couple that with a quick readout device that allows you to not have to send things out of the supply chain to a lab, which is how they're done now, um, but mm -hmm. just sort of verify um, these types of, of quality assurance and quality checks uh, on the spot. So I'm, I'm guessing that using these spores makes the organism metabolically inert. So you don't have to worry about things like the low level of DNA mutation as exactly organisms right. they're, they're, they're totally inactivated. So we've removed I think, three or four genes responsible for that germination. So really what we have is a, just a particle um, in essence. I mean, it's just, it's just inactive. And, and you mentioned that it's a probiotic and you used lettuce as your example. So is this something that you imagine is going to be mostly used in food supply chains? I could see that being extraordinarily useful, but perhaps you can even branch out into non-edible things. Yeah, so, so we've worked with the beers uh, on diamonds. We've gotten inquiries about tagging explosives. Uh, to be mm -hmm. honest, um, picture a big mining company whose explosives end up in a, in a civil war. We, we've heard everything. Uh, both organic and non-organic in terms of applications. Um, we're just focusing this year particularly on romaine lettuce because of, of customer demand, but the applications are actually uh, just really endless in terms of how you could apply this to, to a number of different things. In the lettuce, for example, it's actually post-harvest and it's mixed with the wash water. So it's actually not touching in the field. I see. There's one reason the EPA is not involved. Um, and that's basically the case. A lot of it is, it doesn't really need to be at the field, but just post harvest or post, you know, whatever that system is, post mining or whatever it is. So um, that's usually how it's added in. Can you, can you use these to verify that these products have been ethically sourced? I imagine it depends on who your um, yeah. customer is, but- uh, We've please, actually, probably. so in, in cacao and coffee, this is a big issue, especially in Europe and the United States where, where like ethical sourcing is legislated pretty much. So we've done things like, uh, we, this was one of the coolest demos, which was we took coffee beans, roasted them, like brewed cups of coffee, and then like traced them back to the origin to show that these were ethically sourced cups of coffee and these weren't. So you, yeah, we, we, like uh, in coffee in particular, I think there's like 22 different certifications that they need. And you can, you can embed those, so to speak in these tags, you know, the, the, the authenticity. When you did the coffee experiment, did you tag the, did you tag the beans before you roasted them? Before we roasted. Oh, wow. That's amazing. It, it, what's amazing is that the spores are just in, in the spores that we use are just, they cling to organic matter really well, I mean, especially grasses. That's why they're really good in things like leafy greens. And that's just a, that's just a property of this. And so one of the things that actually, to go back to the, the earlier question, Julie was, I remember sitting in that class and someone started talking about spores or at gen space. Someone was complaining about spores actually and about how hardy they were and how like there's such a pain to get rid of. And I was like, huh, that's interesting. Cause I was like, that could be, that would be the perfect way to protect any sort of tag. Mm -hmm. um, how can you flip and that? So I was yeah. just like, oh, huh, interesting. <laughs>
just quickly, have you sent spores through the digestive systems of any animals? That is a great question. And uh, yeah, th that's a really good, that's a big area of interest that we're currently working on. And I again, I don't know if I can say more about it, but there's a huge need for that. Um, because if you think about linking, just in a contamination, you go in, you're sick, linking the, 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 the sample, the human sample to the actual outbreak and the location is, is would, would, would basically truncate the time of a recall investigation from like three months to like an hour. Yep. So, cool. Yeah. So ongoing, uh, stay tuned. Is that the, the yeah, message we're, there, Michelle? <laughs> it, it's like so raw that I don't know what I can say. So we actually take, we don't know what the data is. Like, that's what we, how we kind of pitch it to the customer, which is this could be a barcode, this could be your mother's maiden name. It doesn't really matter to us. You just tell us what you want in terms of like basically length <laughs> and how many, um, but we don't know exactly what you're, ta we, we know what you're tagging. We don't know necessarily what you're tagging it with. So whether that's your own internal serial code or, or whatever, that's, that's one way we can just say, hey, look, you want to tag all of these uh, lo lots of lettuce or whatever it is, but we don't know what that actually represents. You, do you mean, I'm sorry, Vishal, just to make sure I understand, do you mean that you, you um, at Anika don't know what that sequence is that you're tagging? You know what with? the sequence is, but we don't know what that sequence is representing, right? So they can I say see. 07582, like we don't know what that necessarily right, is. Right, right, right. We're just okay. sticking it into a sequence and we're sticking it into the organism, but that could mean a host of different things to that actual customer. Um, and so while, you know, if it's a lot number, a batch number, it doesn't really, it, there's no security issue with such, but if there was something sensitive, we still wouldn't know. So that's how we kind of address it with them, which is you just, you're just telling us how many you need. Uh, we, we create the unique sequences, the unique strains, so to speak. And then we assign those strains to whatever unique situation that they have, if that makes any sense. Oh, yeah, I see. Michelle, do you let your customers choose the sequence that uh, that they want? Or no, we just... So we're just creating our own sequences and then basically just linking them essentially to whatever the digital data that they want is, or whatever whatever the the serial number that they they're looking for. Like one one would imagine that perhaps more important than uh, than a sort of specific message that's encoded in the DNA would be uniqueness of that message, so that so that other, other, you know, other companies or other users of your product do not come dangerously close. Exactly. The... We have almost a, an infinite coding space, as we call it. So we use both sequence and come and sort of positional. So we use actually multiple ways to create that, that the, again, the coding space. So it, we have very distinct differences from one barcode to the next. Company-wise, one of the things we're actually working on today um, just signed a huge partnership um, last month with a company that will go public soon um, is actually creating functionality for a tag. So not only do you have a tag, but it's now able to be antimicrobial, bacteriostatic, increase nutrients of the food. So we look at it as our tags as just a platform, and then we can add proteins as almost like biological apps. Um, sort of part of just enhancing the food system and food safety. But sort of wrapped in that, the bigger prediction is on GMOs. So I think that the world is going to have to uh, sort of change its stance on genetically modified organisms because of climate change. And I think the, I, I think the, 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 it would shift it so anti-GMO sort of illogically because of things like Monsanto and sort of miscommunication around that. And now I think it's gonna, and you're already seeing it with things like the Impossible Burger. Like I think consumers are now starting to put kind of ESG and environmental friendliness and climate change above just a blanket, we don't like GMOs. And I think that's gonna be a major tailwind for you know our whole industry and our sector and specifically our business. But I think that, especially over the next, I think this will happen in the next five years or 10 years. But I think if you know we're gonna protect our crops and, and, and really like take on climate change head on, uh, and obviously people's stances on climate change vary, but I won't get into that. But like, <laughs> um, the way to do it is through GMOs. And I think that as a technology is just going to be, uh, again, inevitable and something that everyone's going to have to embrace. And, and I think it's going to happen over the next decade. 
Interesting. Uh, obviously, we at IndieBio think the same because we are <laughs> investing in that uh, as part of the future. 